Hey guys, we're here at the Dallas International Film Festival. I'm with the director Leah Meyerhoff of the film I Believe in Unicorns. Uh, so this movie was at South By and I, I sort of heard all of this buzz about it and it was nominated for the Grand Jury Award, so congratulations. Um, but uh, tell me a little bit about you and how you got involved with the project. It's your thesis film for NYU. Yes, so um, I first started writing this script at NYU and wanted to tell a story about a teenage girl that was authentic and real and imaginative and creative and it's the reason I became a filmmaker in the first place was to create films with strong female lead characters. Um, so when I was writing the script I drew on stories and memories from my own teenage years in collaboration with stories that I'd learned from the actors and actresses that I was auditioning and meeting who were you know, her teenagers now. So it was a real collaboration creating the lead character. So this is your thesis film which is sort of um, you know the climax of your st studies as a filmmaker, at least in your schooling, um, and watching the film, I felt like that there was a question that you were exploring, sort of a question maybe you had now that I know it's based on real life. Um, what is sort of that question that drives the film? What made you say, I need to make a movie about this? Um, I think the question at the heart of the film is why do young women in particular um, end up making choices that they know aren't right for themselves and yet they do it anyway like why do we fall in love with the wrong person um, it, at its heart the story is about two teenagers who are wrong for each other but they don't realize it or they don't want to believe it and so it's kind of like why do we why do we do that to ourselves like the lengths that people will go to to try to feel loved it was interesting because I watched it with my dad there were some parts I was like <laughs> Can this awkward. sex scene be over already? <laughs> but it's interesting because my dad kept, you know, saying commentary like, "All right, he's done with her. He's done with her. She, what is she doing?" You know. I mean, we as grown grown-ups, you know, however grown-up we can be feel like we have a little bit more of an answer to maybe that question. But I think when you're young, um, often teenagers, their very first relationship, it is confusing and it's muddled and it's messy and they just don't know better. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think in, in this particular story and with this character, she has grown up rather quickly. Um, her mother's disabled, she's grown up taking care of her, she had to become a parent figure in a way and never really had a childhood of her own and is meets this boy and he's so energetic and charismatic and she's just swept off her feet and thinks this is going to be this fairy tale romance. Because I grew up on fairy tales and I think I still to this day want a man on a steed, Prince Charming, to rescue me. Um, if you're out there. <laughs> and life doesn't work out that way. No. You know, life is messy and teenagers make mistakes right. and we're all human. So. But you do, you use that idea of the fairy tale in um, sort of these dream sequences in the movie. Um, which are done so well and yet I know that someone who read your script went oh my god how are we doing this so tell me about sort of the process of the the um, idea of these dream sequences how you put them on the page and then how you executed them yeah well my process was actually quite unique in that when I was writing the screenplay I wrote two screenplays at once one was text text based normal screenplay format and the other one was a lookbook and it was all visual references and so um, I have a fine art background as well so I took a lot of photographs and reference a lot of other films and so forth as a way of communicating to the financiers and the crew and everyone kind of what this film would actually look like since it does have such a unique aesthetic and we shot the film on film actually so it's all on super 16 millimeter and some super 8 millimeter so I know no one does and we even animated on film which is like unheard of these days um, but I really wanted to tell this story through this teenage girl's eyes and it, film was just a natural choice for this is how she sees the world in this very vivid color. She takes Polaroids, she's like the last scene in the film, she's developing pictures. She's like old school and analog, she's into black and white photography and and the film itself, the look of the film has this very handcrafted texture, like you can kind of see the fingerprints on the edges of the frame. Did you use a filter? I mean how, what, how, what? All kinds of techniques, so um, I worked with two different cinematographers and we did a lot of tests in advance. Um, you know, one one thing we did is we bought a lot of expired film on eBay and shot that 
just so we get all kinds of different colors and effects. Um, we did some time-lapse photography. We used a whole bunch of filters. It was, it was like the making of this film was just as much of an adventure as the adventure on screen. Yeah, the time-lapse. Um, there's a specific image um, of her being buried or suffocated. She comes home, because um, a lot of people haven't seen the film. She comes home and her mom's on the ground. She picks her up and then there's this, this dream sequence of her being suffocated by leaves, this time-lapse. Um, so what sort of what sort of films did you draw because I haven't seen that since like the 1970s that that sequence in particular was such a challenge to shoot we literally we dug a giant hole in the ground and the actress lay down in it and we buried her in the yeah. ground and then she had to stay still for almost three hours while our animators animated these vines growing up around her face and out of her mouth yeah. like one frame of film at a time mm -hmm. and you know every every 10 minutes I check in Natalia are you okay down there she's like I'm doing great you know I mean she was amazing amazing to work with but I looked at I'm not an animator this is my first attempt at animation and so um, I looked at a lot of Jan Svenkmeyer's films I looked at a lot of yeah old animations um, from Europe in like the 70s yeah. well because I really like the idea of doing two scripts one of which being a lookbook and it's funny because uh, Shane Carruth sort of described upstream color he's like if someone looked at my script they would not see a script they would see chicken scratch which is interesting because Amy Simons is in your movie who I love um, so tell me a little bit about, um, I think there's such a community in Texas, um, Amy being a part of that, Shane being a part of that. Um, how did you sort of get involved with that community? You know, someone the other day called me a female Shane Carruth, and I was like, oh, that's such a great compliment. Um, <laughs> if someone called me that, I'd be like, I can die and go to heaven. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I know Amy. I've known Amy. She actually used to be my roommate in New York briefly. She really? sublet, you know, our couch. So I've been friends with Amy for a long while, and uh, she's amazing because she is an actress and a director and just a filmmaker. And so she's just collaborative in so many ways. And um, especially working with younger actors, with I had Natalia Dyer, Peter Vac, and Julia Garner. And Julia and Natalia were both 16 at the time, and Amy was a real mentor to them um, in improvising and kind of working with them. She was lovely. And um, in New York as well, there's a really collaborative film community. I'm actually part of a female film collective called Film Fatales with Eliza as well. And it's a bunch of women writer-directors who we meet once a month and we just help each other make each other's films. And this you know, is why I need to go to New York. That's independent filmmaking. Like, yeah. you know, you figure out how to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. But tell me a little bit about um, the actual symbol of the unicorn. Um, you're wearing it on your shirt. I don't know if you guys can tell. Your shirt and um, your necklace. Yeah. Um, so unicorns to me are an interesting symbol. They're a coming of age symbol in a lot of ways because on the one hand they are very childlike and little girls love playing with unicorns and My Little Pony. And on the other hand they're phallic and they're sexual and they're majestic and they are this kind of adult um, you know mythological creature and so I became interested in as I started writing the screenplay, I started researching more and more about unicorns, and there's all kinds of mythology out there. Um, there's actually a really wonderful story which works its way into the film a bit abstractly, which is that only a virgin can tame a unicorn. I know and this. So in ancient times, what, what the virgin would go into a forest, and she's so pure and beautiful and innocent that a unicorn just like couldn't help himself and would be so mesmerized by her. He'd walk up to her in the middle of this forest and lay down and put his head in her lap, and then she would signal to hunters who are hiding in the trees around and they jump out and capture the unicorn. I was like, oh, that's so perfect for this movie. In this movie, it's about this girl, you know, and she's in losing her virginity and coming of age and she wants to have this child that she never got to have and is kind of dreaming of unicorns and princes and princesses, but, you know, she's, she's too old for that. She outgrows it. You know, talking to so many indie filmmakers and and seeing that there are some of them which sh with ha that have such specific visions, and I saw this, and within ten minutes in, I turned to my dad and I was like, "She's going to get hired to take this vision to other places." Which brings me to, what are the other places? What are you doing next? Well, I have a few scripts in development that I'm working on, and I want to do a love story next, but with adults, not teenagers this time. Um, and in the meantime, I'm traveling with this film for the next couple months, so I'm really having a great time on the festival circuit, just meeting the audience and sharing the film with the world.